Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode. And I just want to give you a little teaser about what we'll be covering. This is a short video. It's going to be 30 minutes long, um, but it's packed with insights. And Lorenzo shared something that I think is like, I've never seen this before. It's a super genius idea based on the before and after concept, but he's basically turbocharged it. And in, when, in my section, I'm actually going to talk about this idea where consumers typically will miss out a lot of the juicy nuggets on a page. Marketers' job is to actually bring their attention back to them. So I've got a clever technique for doing that. Um, stay tuned. Good morning, guys. What's going on? Uh, today, we have a special company because they literally just um, got acquired last year for over 600 million. So not, not too shabby as, as an acquisition. <laughs> um, and the company is uh, Zesty Paws. Um, they're quite big on Amazon. Um, this product in, in specific is the best seller. Uh, it's an allergy product for, for dogs. And uh, on this product page, you know they have over 1300 reviews, but on the corresponding Amazon page, they have over 52,000, which I actually calculated if the conversion rate from customer to review is like 0 0.02, that makes around 10 million uh, customers just for, for that product. So um, pretty, pretty, pretty good, I would say. Um, so I want to talk about uh, one main opportunity that this company has when I did my reviews mining. Um, so let's go through it. If we go through uh, the reviews mining doc, um, as always, I break it down into different themes. And um, if we look at the, I'm gonna make it this a little bit bigger. If we look at the pain points that customers uh, have spoken about in, the, in their reviews, um, we can see that a lot of them are, you know, allergies and issues with the dog eyes, uh, sensitive to stomach. So there's a lot. This, this product is problem um, solution type of pro uh, type of product. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is if we look at the benefits, um, the benefits are pretty much like, OK, fantastic. This this product was able to. Um, you know, to, to take care of, of the problem that I have. So now, thanks to the, pro thanks to the product, my dogs uh, don't have allergen anymore. You know, there's no issue with the eyes anymore. Uh, the paws, which usually are the part of the, the dog body that shows the, the allergies, um, look very healthy. So again, you know, this shows that uh, it's a problem and, and solution type of, uh, type of product. Um, overall, Rishi, when I was reviewing the, uh, the reviews, I have to say that uh, everybody was super stoked with the, with the quality of the product. Um, everybody was quite happy about the results that they, that they got. So what I want to talk about uh, in my kind of like opportunity that I see these guys should, should, lever is, should leverage is um, because the product is so good, I believe they're not doing a good job at uh, actually uh, showcasing how good the product is. Um, Maybe and, you can just show the just show the walk us to the mobile page real quick, just so we yeah. can they can see how straightforward yeah. it is. Yeah, that's a good idea. So if we look at the product page of the bestseller, um, which is the Aller Immune Bites, um, so we have here the um, product uh, images with the different arrows, they actually do have a lot of pretty good uh, images. Um, you know, sure, the, the, the fonts are quite quite small. You can bar barely see some, some information here. But overall, actually, you know, if you zoom in, the, the quality of these images is, is very good. Um, then we have the section of, you know, you can either buy the product one time or uh, in a subscription. And then we have these tabs, which uh, basically hide details about the product, um, the ingredients of, of the food, and then the feeding uh, instructions. And then final, finally, the nutritional uh, FAQ with, uh, with some uh, questions and answers. 
Then we have the review snapshot with a uh, few few reviews, in, mainly with images, and then finally the the, the review, which is which is classic. Now, while I was um, going through, and just to remind everybody that have you know has never watched our show before, uh, in my reviews analysis, I literally eyeball you know all the reviews that I analyze. Usually, it's like between fifty and hundred. Um, depending on how much time I have. And I literally eyeball each of these reviews. Um, so I'm not using any kind of like tool to understand and, and mind that review. It's, it's Lorenzo using his uh, CRO hat. And while I was going through the reviews, I kind of like stopped on, on this one in particular. And I don't want to read the entire thing. I just want to read this part out loud, which I highlighted in red. Um, and it says, I know they work referring to to the to the product to the to the food i know they work because if she referring to the uh, her dog if she doesn't get this for 2 weeks she starts losing hair all over again okay so keep this in mind because i have a couple of solutions um, around how they can make um, this product much better from a conversion uh, rate optimization standpoint. So for this, for this reason, I have two, I'm, I'm gonna propose two different solutions. The first one, I called it, um, they should definitely build a before and after stories page. So a completely separate page um, on the website dedicated to before and after stories. And then they should have a section in the, in the PDP all dedicated to these before and after stories. And here's the format of the before and after stories that I would, uh, that I would use. First of all, I would uh, show an image of a dog with the allergy problem. So that could be like irritated paws or hot spots, which I didn't know what it was, Rishi. I Googled it and oh my God, like it's so bad for, for dogs. So it's, it's a huge, huge issue. Um, so the first image should be an image of the dog with, with the issue. The second one next to it is an image of the same dog after taking the Zesty Paws uh, Allergy Bites product, which is the one that we're uh, talking about today. And then finally, as, as the third one, Usually before and after images are only two, right? The one before and the right after. But in my idea, I want to add a third one that basically uh, shows an image of a dog, again, the same dog as the previous two, um, and what the dog looks like after not taking the allergy bites for a few days. I love that. So it, it, it's almost like, okay, fantastic. The dog first had the product took the zesty pod allergy uh, bites product now doesn't have the dog anymore but here's what happens if the dog stops taking the product for for a few days right and that's a very powerful um image because it shows how, how great the the product is um the second one the second solution to again like augment the uh, understanding of the user of how good this product is, is what I called dramatize the before and after results. And this is different than, than the first uh, idea. It still um, plays with the before and after, but it's very different. So while I was going down, you know, my usual rabbit holes of uh, understanding a little bit more about these customers and this product in particular, I stumbled across something that I didn't even know existed, which is this concept of allerg allergic itch tracker. Have you heard about this before, Rishi? No. Yeah, so apparently um, there is there's this sheet, which is a, an allergy tracker that some dog owners use to basically like keep track of um, how many times during the day um, their dog uh, scratches because of the allergy. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit yeah, uh, just yeah. to make sure that everyone can see it. Um, here, you just put the name of the dog and then 
for each day uh, you put a cross uh, to to basically like um, you know say how how severe the scratch uh, the scratching of the dog and the itchy was. Um, so and then you do that for you know the first seven days and then week two and, and so on, right? So it's like over time you want to see what's what's going on and. If the dog is taking medication, um, which is um, basically like the alternative alternative solution that people have considered during the decision making process, um, you know com that competes against this product, but it's also like a product that uh, people are switching from um, when when they buy this product. So, um, what I had in mind is imagine if we showed a before and after of this tracker. So what I mean by that is before you show how the each tracker looks like before taking uh, the, the allergy bites. And then next to it, there is an image of the same tracker, but after taking the product, um, after the dog taking the product. So now all of a sudden, you know, you expect to see as a, in, the, in the before image, you know, extreme or severe um, itching. And then after they take, they, they take the product, you see most of the X being uh, here at the bottom, right? Almost like 20 euro. So again, it's, it's a great way to show that in, in a visual way um, that the product is, is working and uh, it's, it's a good product. So it's also a good, it's also maybe a good conversion hook for people that aren't convinced where they can start tracking it, which is a constant reminder for them that, oh my God, this is not going down, which is a reminder yeah. to them to buy the product. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Also because um, it's not that a dog has allergy today and then, um, you know, you take the, 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 the bites and then the allergy is not there anymore. Um, and then like the dog will always have allergies, right? It's not something that, it's not a fever that comes and goes, right? After taking medica medications. Now, if the customer is not, um, is not so, actually, if the customer is a little bit more advanced and instead of using a, uh, an allergy tracky, a tracker sheet like this one, but is a little bit more advanced and uses an app, I actually have a solution for that as well. So I was again going down my my rabbit hole, and I found this um, this app called Fitbark, which is a GPS tracker that tracks any dog's movement. And I believe this is a collar, um, so it's an Internet of Things product. So the collar connects with the app on your phone. And what you are seeing here in the screenshot is basically like a graph that showcases um, how many times during the, the, the day and at night as well, which is the time where the you know, more traditional tracker, the paper tracker doesn't work because the owner is not keeping track of how many times the dog, the dog is scratching during the night. Um, so you're seeing here um, day and night, how many times, a graph of how many times the dog uh, scratches. And again, my idea is imagine displaying a before and after graph of how many times the dog uh, was scratching before and after taking uh, the product. Again, it's a communication um, idea. It communicates that this is a great product and this product works. And, and I think I want to just make a point over here is that, you know, I don't want anyone to view this and say, well, I'm not really selling a dog supplement. So, you know, how does this work? We want you to really think about the first principles. And our idea is that the, the first concept was like dramatize or demonstrate the before, after and before kind of thing. So you, that think about how that applies to you. And here we're basically creating another visual tool. Um, so think about like how you can do those similar things. And you can, by the way, you can, you know, um, yeah. So you have to think about and improvise them for your type of product, right? Yeah, this is this is a very good point, Rishi, and it goes back to, um, you know, one of the the big the most important principle of, of a copywriter, right? Which is uh, it's ten x more persuasive to show something 
rather can rather than just sell it, right? So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Instead of saying this product works, I'm showing a clear proof backed in in this case backed by data, right? Um, they can't like the user can't be skeptical about this. Yeah. This is like this is a proof, like a clear proof, right? A clear demonstration of the quality of the product. Um, and so as Rishi said, you know, even if you don't sell dog food or dog supplements, it's it, the same principle can be applied to, to any business, right? That's, that's all I got for, uh, for my idea, Rishi. I'm actually quite stoked to, to, to hear yours. Wonderful. No, this is great. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I'm just going to go back to the page real quick. I'm looking at the desktop version of the page uh, just because it takes, it's bigger, bigger real estate. Um, and I'm actually going to reduce the size a little bit so I can make Lorenzo's image bigger. Um, so the one thing, the one thing that's really, so what I do is when I am looking at a page, I'm actually trying to understand what are the most important assets on this page that will likely have a positive effect in getting someone to actually buy. And as I was going through the page, I noticed that their description is very, very short. Uh, ingredients are ingredients. You know, nobody is really, you know, I mean, it, these are technical terms. I don't know what this means. Um, you know, feeding instructions are important, certainly, and nutritional FAQs, but there's not a lot of content here. And what I noticed was there's actually a fair amount of content hidden in their in their image carousel itself. So like, for example, the feeding instructions are actually here itself. You actually don't even have to go to that tab. And I think Lorenzo pointed out something very important, which is that the, the size of the image content is really, really small. Uh, so it's hard to see. Uh, but I think that's a different UI UX issue that can be solved. But the principal point here is that there's a lot of content over here that, um, for example, five strain gut health blend, you know, there's some interesting copy here, wild Alaskan salmon oil. This is just not part of the description. It's only available in this image. Um, then over here, um, again, they've got some benefit statements over here. Uh, they've got talked about the fact that they have 200,000 reviews, uh, which is important social proof because this page itself has only 1300 reviews. So, you know, it's, it's a big number. Um, no artificial flavors, again, made in USA. These are all important selling propositions for the buyer. Quality you can trust, NASC, quality seal. And then finally, they have a comparison between the, the competitors. And then I think over here, they have the zesty promise. So basically what they've done, which I think is a super genius idea, is they've converted their image gallery, which they already know is a high activity area, foot traffic area, and converted it into essentially a picture sales pitch. Now, that's a great idea. And I'm, I'm a big fan of that approach. The only thing I would say, and I might have to refresh this page to get out of this. Um, the only thing I would say is that there are now, let's look at the scenarios. There are some people that will come to this image gallery and they will go through all the images. Great. There are some people that will go through 40% of images. There are some people who will probably not even go through more than two images. And this poses a challenge for the marketer. Now, the reason why someone stopped looking at the images, like for example, let's say I'm here and I look at the second image. Um, I might just kind of assume that the remaining images, you know, I can see there are 20 more images. I might assume the remaining images might be lifestyle images. I have no idea. I can't, I can't read the what the images are. So I might just, for that reason, stop reading it after this point. Now, this poses a challenge for the marketer because people are going to stop at different points. Now, I have to nudge them if I can nudge them to see the remaining images, but I want to do it in a really smart way where it's not annoying. So in my concept, what I've done is, um, so basically what I've done is, and, and hopefully this is big enough, I've just added one line over here. Um, it says, we're going to reveal seven details you need. To, so basically I left the copy the same. And then below that, I said, we're going to reveal seven details you need to see. And there's a button over here that says ready. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, this number seven is actually dynamic. So if someone were to stop seeing the images on the after the first image, it would show a higher number. If you go 50% through, it'll show a lower number. If you go through all the images, this entire message line is going to be removed. So we're using conditional logic to kind of show this line. 
also we're constructing the copy in a way where there is an incentive for you to want to click on it and interact with it. And what happens is when you click on it, we then reveal, maybe we expand this further out and we reveal those, we start from where you left off. So it's another nudge to, um, to continue seeing the images. It is based on something that Lorenzo has talked about many times before, which is it's based on the assumption that this these images truly improve the probability of converting. So the way I would do that is I would first have tracking in place that would, before I even do the test, to triangulate to get data that says people that go through you know five or six images, what is a conversion rate versus people that don't go? If the data says that they converted a much higher rate, then this idea kind of is designed for that. So that was my that was my first idea. My second idea is that look, we all have very limited hours in a day, and also when you're working on the same marketing puzzle, it your brain starts losing IQ. It becomes harder and harder to think of clever ideas. So what I like to do is I like to steal. Uh, it's all legal. I like to steal ideas from other marketers. And so I Googled what this product does, which is immune solution for dogs. I found a bunch of competitors that showed up. I went to each of their product pages and I was paying attention to copy choices that they were making that I felt were things that we could get inspiration from to construct or to incorporate into our sales pitch. So for example, one of the websites used this phrase of defend your dog, uh, doggo. And I really like this idea of defending because, you know, we have such deep relations and we, and our dogs are helpless. So the idea of defending, I thought emotionally connected with me quite a bit. So I would kind of use this idea. Um, they don't own the, pro the intellectual property on the idea of defending, right? It's a, just English language. Another website said vet recommended, which I thought was really good assurance because I don't want to just buy a product. I want to buy something that experts are recommending. I also really like this term that was used on another website called soothe allergy related skin issues. And I felt it was such a calm term. And again, it goes back to the dynamics of my relationship with my pet, which is a loving relationship. So soothe is a very nice term. Um, this was another great term, easy to swallow. And, you know, because obviously my dog can't communicate back to me, I thought this was a really strong term. Natural immune function. This is also very important because people are big fans of natural supplements. And so when you say natural immune functions, what you're basically saying is that this product actually allows your body to naturally heal itself and, or it just facilitates that. And I thought that was a very strong thing as well. And then the final example I found was formulated by a team of animal nutritionists. So it's kind of similar to wet recommended, but it's just going approaching it slightly differently because it tells me that there's a team of people over here, not just one person, but actually a team of people. Um, so that's an example of what you can get by looking at your competitor's product pages. But you can take this further. You can actually just go to Google and look at blog articles or uh, scientific journals or things like that and, uh, and find interesting stuff. So one of the things that I discovered while I was doing that research was an interesting fact called your dog, which was basically that your dog's gut contains 70% of its immune system. And I didn't know this. Um, mm. So I'd like to kind of include this in my product description. Why would I do that? And I'll tell you why. When the consumer, people always like to learn new stuff. So when I'm reading a product description, if I'm getting free knowledge from it, it, it actually creates a halo effect. It makes me actually appreciate that brand more because I've just, for no money, I just learned something new and interesting. But it also demonstrates expertise because the only people who would know these kind of minute details are people who are really kind of experts in this field. And so it again creates a halo effect where I feel that the brand really, really understands this, this topic. Now, the way I would kind of make this more dramatic is uh, I would change it to say your dog's gut contains about and then have a reveal button of its immune system here. When you click on reveal, that's when we release reveal the 70% number. Because as a marketer, I always want to do showmanship and I want to kind of like get the user to interact with my sales pitch. The more I know this for a fact, the more a user interacts with my sales pitch, higher the likelihood of them buying. It's simple as that. So I want to create as many opportunities as I can to get people to interact with my sales pitch. Some CRO people would say this is unnecessary friction because you're making adding an extra click. And I would say that's please don't listen to them. It's ludicrous. Um, the whole idea is that you're adding friction to give something valuable to the buyer. It's totally fine if that's, that's the case.
And then I have just one other recommendation, which is that I noticed that when I when I look at this drop down, they have you know a lamb flavor, they have peanut butter, and they have salmon. And most people would look at this and probably instinctively know that you know lamb is their dog's favorite, or peanut butter is their favorite, or salmon is their favorite. That's fine. I don't want to get in the way of the people who actually know that. I want to add conditional logic that says if someone opens this drop down and does not make a selection, maybe you can have something like opens a drop down and maybe moves around but is unable to, is not clicking on something. That actually might be a micro signal that they are having difficulty choosing between lamb, peanut butter, and salmon. I'm just speculating. Uh, and if that's the case, I'd like to conditionally show this message after a two second delay or whatever that rule is that says favored by 72% of shoppers as just a micro nudge to help them understand that, look, if you're having difficulty selecting between lamb, peanut butter, and salmon, just know that 72% of our buyers select lamb. And so that social proof might actually be a good enough push to get the buyer to buy. So that is my idea. I love this one. I've never seen anybody uh, doing something like that. Um, it's interesting here that they they want to get rid of the lamb. <laughs> Look, they out of like five options, three are are lamb. They probably need to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what their what their thinking is, but um, yeah. that that wraps up our show. We want to keep this short, to the point, give you value back information. Um, we hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you with yet another uh, DTC brand very soon. Ciao. Guys, ciao.